This is The Weekly Set, the official podcast of TVEnthusiast.com. Episode 75, recorded September 22nd, 2016. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set Podcast, the official podcast of TVEnthusiast.com. I am your host and editor-in-chief of TV Enthusiast. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is William Rorick, our Keeper of Comics. Hello. Today, we have a special guest. Uh, People who've listened to the podcast for a long time might find her familiar, Lee Swiffa. Hey. So today, we're celebrating our 75th episode of the podcast. So we're going to be doing a round of Advocates of Great Television. So uh, as normal, if, if any of you have seen us do this before or heard us do this before, this is our sixth installment of Advocates. Uh, basically, we all just picked a specific show and a sp- specific episode of a show, and then we watched them all, and we're going to discuss them now. So, And uh, we're, we each represent an advocate. So as we go to each person's turn, they'll lead off the discussion and we'll go into it. Uh, so I'm going to start things off. My pick was Xena Warrior Princess Season 3, Episode 12, The Bittersweet. This was the musical episode of Xena. So just touching base real quick, what do you guys think? I thought, wow, this is weird. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, no, it, it was, it was pretty good. Um, I mean, it was, it was the episode about Xena and Gabrielle having relationship issues. <laughs> Musical episodes always seem to have some kind of like, they have to have some like emotional turmoil at the heart of them, that they are like characters are working out their emotional turmoil. You saw the same thing like in the Buffy musical, you know? Yep. Yep. That's true. Um, oh, I enjoyed it. Was this something you'd seen before? No, actually, I I hadn't seen this episode before. So but you'd, you'd seen the show, just not the episode. Yeah, I seen the show. Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with Xena, just not that episode. So Lee, how about you? Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with Xena as well. Um, I was really impressed. Like like you said, it was progressive for its time, mm. and I like when you said it was a musical episode. I thought like there'd be like one or two songs. Like I wasn't expecting kind of like a full musical episode. Like that was a whole like play into itself. So I was really yeah. impressed that there was just like that everything was a musical. Like it was well, it was well performed, well decorated. Like everything was sort of as good as it could have been for that time period and for that show. I just really thought that episode was very well produced. Um, and I liked it. Like it's, it still kept true to the, to the show, but and like it was musical. Like it w- was weird, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, it weird, but worked. Aside from uh, a few rocky special effect clips. And I stuff. was going to say like the special effect clips. Ooh, Some mid- of them, the practical stuff was good. Mid nineties but- syndication. <laughs> yeah. Uh, CGI. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing about this show. Now I don't, I don't know how this show was for Lee in Canada, but in the United States, um, Hercules and Xena were both uh, syndicated shows, which meant they didn't have a firm network they aired on. They could have aired on, you know, CBS in one area and Fox in another area. Usually usually aired on UPN where I live. Yeah, for me, it was uh, KTLA, which is basically the same as the CW right now. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Uh, Yeah. That that was what it was for me. Uh, uh, Lee, was it on like a stable channel over in Canada or was it like all over the place? like syndicated over here um i was too young to remember i think it was on one channel but uh not really sure i just watched it whenever it was on tv yeah that that was it was on saturdays for me it was like my saturday night uh uh, when i didn't have like anything to do with friends or something (laughs) it was my lonely saturday night show was uh hercules and xena um yeah yeah. they're fun they i mean they're fun shows uh definitely uh it had it had the qual you know that Sam Raimi quality to it you know that you get like in all of his work mm-hmm. really um I definitely enjoyed them for what they were uh, Xena actually blew up became bigger than Hercules did oh uh, yeah yeah it was it was a better show too <laughs> yeah it was a better show too yeah <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> Hercules Hercules was what started it and then it started getting it, it got a little bit cheesy as it got longer in its run um, Xena was kind of doing a lot more interesting stuff. 
So I was actually torn when I was picking the episode because in the same season, just like a few episodes before, they they did a Groundhog's Day episode, which was something that like people really weren't doing at that time either. Um, so they're, they've done, did quite a few really interesting episode concepts on Xena that are now things that are very commonplace in, in science fiction or fantasy. So that was, uh, something I really enjoyed about the show. And so this musical episode, it's kind of interesting to watch, um, because, you know, now we've had stuff like the Buffy musical, you know, <laughs> the psych musical, all these different shows that have had like musical episodes now. But I really can't think of something that came before Xena that actually did like a full on musical episode. You know, what? I'm blanking, too. <laughs> so, yeah, this uh, uh, episode, as, as Will said, it dealt with kind of the turmoil developing between um, Xena and Gabrielle. Um, but in the episode, we also got to see, uh, Ted Ramey, uh, Sam Ramey's brother as Joxer, um, Kevin Smith, not the director, as Ares, and Hudson Liek as Callisto, who was, uh, uh, so one of the characters I very fondly remember from the series, the crazy oh, yeah. blonde that just went nuts. And <laughs> she was probably like, uh, Xena's like art. I remember her being pretty much Xena's arch nemesis. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> basically, evil Xena. Okay, so um, done talking about Xena, let's move on to Lee's pick. Now, Lee, you picked uh, Charmed Season 5 uh, Episodes 1 and 2, A Witch's Tale. Oh my god, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's already... <laughs> one hour. No, one hour and a half? No, I don't know. Yeah, without commercials, it was like an it hour and a like, half. Yeah, it was 84 minutes, according to Netflix. Okay, an hour and a half. <laughs> I, I've forgotten that it was a, like an extra long episode. Like I just, because it's been a while, so I just thought it was like one or two episodes. Yeah, One or two episodes. No, it's fine. Wait, I watched the entirety of it. Um, so did Tyson, I think? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Lee, lead us off here. Um, your, it was your pick. Uh, how, what was Charms for, Charmed for you as a show growing up? Oh, Charmed was awesome. It was kind of like the next Xena. Like, you know, I had Xena and it was a great show and sort of introduced me to like heroes and like hero type shows, which is sort of like what we, what is like exploding right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but Charmed, the next big thing were powerful women. They were witches. They had powers and they were always fighting and protecting the innocent which was very cool um and they were sisters so it was like not only was it a female lead but it was um it showcased just like xena female uh like relationships with other like women like female friendships it like, certainly passes the betrel test oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, i love that they were a learning about themselves learning about their powers um learning about their relationships to each other and sort of growing um as a family and it was the show where you saw weird stuff like mermaids and demons and um I loved like Leo was the angel and like it was cool that they had the special effects where he disappeared and they would freeze time like all these cool things that I didn't see in any any other show so I loved it um I watched as much of it as I could and also because the intro was super addictive um, <laughs> It was a it was a, a, a Smith song, right? They used for the yeah, intro. Yeah, hard like kind of rock. Yeah, they cut that out and just left like a little somewhat similar like two note thing on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that. I was like, I was like, where, where's the intro? Oh, <laughs> that's just typical yeah. Netflix music rights. Yeah. <laughs> the, the title sort of got cut out for this specific episode because it was a longer sort of pilot ish episode. So this episode it is cut out, but it's actually in the other um it's in the other show. Episode. Oh, they are on Netflix? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was one of those weird music rights issues where they pulled it out. Like, I know if you watch, I think it was like Married with Children, for example, you know, it has the famous like Frank Sinatra song, Love and Marriage, that plays at the beginning. But then when you watch it on Netflix, it's like this generic song they stuck in in its place. <laughs> That's why, t that's why TV shows don't have openings anymore. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> part of it. Yeah. Or in, unless it's like, uh, 
you know, written for the show where they retain the full rights. Yeah, they retain the full rights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, in the, the episode, uh, we had uh, the sisters, uh, um, uh, Phoebe, Piper, and Paige. Uh, they ended up having to try to find and protect her or to protect a, a mermaid. I like how the episode was basically a riff off of the Little Mermaid. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it kind kind of kind of made me feel like a little like Once Upon a Time ash. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely got that vibe. Very similar. Yes, uh, definitely. Like I, I was waiting for the sea hag to like you know make some reference to the Little Mermaid or something to the what was the character in Little Mermaid, the evil witch. Uh, Ur- Ursula. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for her to make some Ursula reference or something. Nope. <laughs> I don't think they were never going to make such a direct reference to what was clearly inspiring the episode. Um, <laughs> but it was pretty good. Um, um, it was pretty good. Uh, we got some great character moments. Um, geez. I'm tr- I'm struggling to remember like the sisters' names now. Like in order, I don't Paige. <laughs> it's Phoebe, pa- Piper, and Paige. Yeah, Piper. Okay, so yeah, so Piper. I think I think she had like the best character arc this episode because for the entire first half of the episode, she's like so afraid, and it's 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 to a point where like her fear is crippling her to a point where she can't even fight back against the sea hag who steals the mermaid out from under them. Um, Leo basically made her aware of uh, the fact that when her mother died, she was left alone, and then that became like a motivating thing for her to be there for her child. Yeah. And then, so once that was kind of brought up to her, she went from being like all in on the power of three sisterhood thing to like, you know, I gotta watch myself. Yeah, I gotta watch my... Yeah, exactly. And, and I like like, she goes to links of like she casts the spell on herself to take away her fear and then it just re- makes her ridiculously reckless yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> great interview opportunity though with uh, yeah. her sister <laughs> yeah. oh yeah yeah great interview <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> uh, <laughs> that interview i like uh so, so I think, I think, uh, Piper had the most interesting character journey this episode. Uh, thought, Paige really didn't have a, a character arc. Yeah, I was gonna say, the weakest was Paige. She didn't really. She was just kind of along for the ride in this episode. Yeah, she was, yeah, she was just along for a ride. There was, like, stuff about her job, and that was boring. Um, <laughs> uh, Phoebe had her arc involving, um, her having sent, uh, uh, Cole, her husband, to hell, and then having to kind of deal with that when he shows back up, right when she thinks he's kind of out of her life and she's gonna move on yep and then she gets turned into a mermaid herself and (laughs) that causes all kinds of issues yeah i thought it was really cool how they handled that um the the idea of like um like her running away from her problems by using the mermaid by using oh the yeah mermaid. yeah I love that she wanted to be free so badly that she became a mermaid or that a spell <laughs> turned her into a mermaid turned yeah so that she could be free and I, l- I also like the idea of um, this was sort of the very first times where I saw two characters who were actually in love and they free and they loved each other but they decided not to be with each other and and could accept that and could be like an adult about it and and let go of somebody that they loved even though um yeah even though that they loved them so that mm-hmm. was new and cool for me um because when whenever you look at tv like if a woman's in love with a guy or if a guy's if a guy if a man and a woman are in love with each other they're usually together and there's there's i'd in a very healthy adult way like let's let's be apart <laughs> They had, um, speaking of this episode, you mentioned, uh, uh, the mermaid character, um, uh, uh, Miley. Uh, she's played by Jamie Presley. It was kind of interesting watching her in that kind of role, playing like this innocent girl that just wants to find <laughs> love. And when I think Jamie Presley, I always think of like, my name is Earl. Yeah. <laughs> Where she's just like a horrible, like real white trash person, you know? <laughs> so it's just such a weird thing to see whenever you see something like that. Just just an actor in this old role that's just very different from the roles you've known them for. I actually made the mistake and thought that it was uh, Margot Robbie. <laughs> oh, yeah, Margot Robbie! Looked, yeah. yeah, for a second I was like, oh, I think that's they the do. They Margot do. Robbie. 
Yeah, they do they look, look very similar. similar. Yes. In that yeah. in that specific makeup and like like shoot sh- like style or shoot. Yeah, but then but then yeah, you pointed it out. That's Jamie. So that's actually very cool. <laughs> it's just such a very different role. Like when you see Jamie Presley from what was what, she got her first real push in what it was uh, uh, Bring It On, right? That was the one that that cheerleader movie, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Bring It On, yeah. Um, where she played kind of like a you know a jerk character, <laughs> and then she's done no, she, oh, quite no. a few other roles. I don't think she was in Bring It On. She was. Oh in, no, she spoofed it. Not, yeah. Uh, yeah, she spoofed it. Not another teen movie. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, but that's that's more like the character I've come to associate with the actress, you know, just from My Name Is Earl and and not another teen movie and stuff like that. So it's just so weird to see her in this kind of like sweet innocent role. <laughs> so, uh, uh, anything else about Charmed? Uh, it actually aired as a pilot. Like that whole season aired like that whole two episodes. They aired it as one big episode, which was I think new or different for that time. So yeah, it wasn't too common. You you started yeah, okay. seeing that more live. Lost did that a lot, where, like, Lost would have all of its season premieres and finales were always, like, two hours. Um, but, yeah, that it wasn't too common, and it's not too terribly common since. You get these weird pairings before where, like, Will, Will and I have talked about this before, where, like, they'll take, like, a comedy show, and they just want to run out the episodes they have, so they'll put two episodes back-to-back, but they're completely different episodes. They're not, it's not like it's a, you know, one-hour event or something for this half-hour show. It's just they took two random episodes and smashed them together. Whereas, like, these kind of, like, longer two-parter stories stories the air is like a two-hour episode it's just not very common um anymore and it was really only becoming popular i think around the time of lost because lost did it with every season oh but i'm trying to think of other shows that did that like before then and i, I don't know yeah, I, not not too many i remember be- watching it and being so surprised that like why isn't the episode ending it just kept going and going <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I don't think I had ever seen that before that, before this episode, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, it's, it's not, not too terribly of a common thing, even, like I said, even still. And nowadays, when you do see it, it's just like, like I said, it's, they'll do it with comedies a lot. And they just smash two episodes together. They're completely unrelated. <laughs> or it's only like the season premiere. Or yeah. The pilot, the, only the pilot episode and never again. Yeah, definitely. What you do get a lot now is you'll get like, um, Mr. Robot does it every so often or shows on FX sometimes where they run over their time, but not like an actual like half hour, hour over. They'll just run like 10 minutes over. Um, and they're just like the special elongated episodes. That's like pretty much all of this season of Mr. Robot was like that. They all ran at least like a few minutes over. <laughs> Netflix and things like that, like, people are sort of able to set their own, like, show times, which is really interesting, because now episodes can run longer or shorter or somewhere in between, whereas before it was definitely set, like, you had 40 minutes and that was it. Exactly, yeah. Now now it just doesn't even matter. You can have, like, a 50-minute episode, then have, like, a 30-minute episode the next week. It just doesn't matter. It's like it's like chapters in a book, where, like, sometimes a chapter's, like, four pages and sometimes it's, like, 30. It just, as long as it gets that part of the story done, it doesn't really matter too terribly much. I mean, they're never going to, you're not going to see like extreme differences where like in the middle of a season, all of a sudden there's like a four hour episode or something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> they'll, they'll break it down from that. But but even still, like it's, it's kind of getting rid of the necessity for like episode lengths because episode lengths is all about fitting into a schedule. And when you get onto stuff like Netflix, that's just irrelevant. So, uh, let's move on then. Let's talk about Will's Pick. Now, Will's Pick was Amazing Stories. This is a anthology series that aired on NBC. And a little, little bit of, uh, related news there is that it is coming back. Um, it Brian is Fuller. Back. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. Brian Fuller is going to be, um, running a remake of the series. It's one of the three shows he's working on. Um, but this old series, this is from what, 1984? Yeah, 85, I believe. 
Okay, yeah, and it's uh, we're gonna be talking about season one, episode ten, "Remote Control Man." I thought I found that's most the one most relevant to this website. That's <laughs> uh, the eighties culture. <laughs> it's it's all about eighties culture in television, uh, <laughs> which is if anything this website is about. It's about television, but this kind of <laughs> has like uh, this kind of ends up having a anti TV message. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the ending was weird because it was like, you know, don't tune out and watch TV. Go back to your abusive spouse. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, like I was struggling to understand like what the episode was trying to say or where it was going because maybe the spouse is a black. She has, you know, reason. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, Lee makes a very good point. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. She does say, she does say at the very end, like she, she was a horrible character, no redeeming quality. And I was like, how are they, how are they ever gonna, like, how is that ever gonna be preferred over, you know, the amazing television characters? And at the end she says, come, come to bed, I'm lonely. And that was sort of the only one redeeming thing. And I, I sort of understood, like, oh, okay, she was, because she, she just thought she was being ignored and she was like dressing up. So that was like another thing, like she wanted to get her husband's attention over this. Part of me wonders if this is like a really early for TV example of an unreliable narrator where the original vision we got of her and of his kids was an unreliable portrayal of those characters based on his perception as somebody that just wanted to get away and watch TV. Yeah, it was definitely an, an exaggeration. Like, the, the teenager was a monk, the kid was like, the eight-year-old was like super punk rock with like dyed hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which yeah. is great because that was a uh, chunk from the Goonies. Yeah, it was chunk from the oh. Goonies, yeah. He was also apparently a monster who was willing to just like shred, shred his father's hand a bit hand the bits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know that you could like portray an eight year old that viciously on TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not nowadays unless they're like possessed by a demon or something, but <laughs> possessed, but yeah. But like yeah, I mean so I was like, like where this episode because he apparently has such such an awful life and everything and he, he just seems to be like such a huge pushover too. Who just like <laughs> his last name is Poindexter, by yeah, the way. Yeah. <laughs> he he he, he he just lets this abuse happen to him um and his only escape is the television and then, and then when he gets it and the main the main crux of this episode and this is like like if 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 you're an 80s nostalgia like fan like 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 if you love 80s nostalgia you'll love this episode because it is shock full of it <laughs> you know even though like it's it's referencing the pop culture from the time but like but he he brings home this magic tv he gets from like this weird like place that looks like some but you know that looks like the 80s conception of 2016 <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah yeah. <laughs> it's the future. It's the future. The, the, like the Sam, the uh, the movie Click. Yeah, I was yeah, I was I thinking know. that too. The the yeah. Bed Bath and Beyond or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Click definitely ripped off a lot of the story from this episode. I feel <laughs> Adam Sandler just watched this yeah. this and then wrote Click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it it's it's so funny. And then when they bring out like this this futuristic looking television. Vision, and it's so hilarious <laughs> because <laughs> that yeah. is nothing like what a future television is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an old t- it's just an old tube TV in like a futuristic casing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's silver, the future. <laughs> the world of tomorrow. The world of tomorrow. Yeah. He had to turn his bosses and like managers into like TV characters too cuz like he did it with his family so like his workplace is just as horrible and I I I felt so like like unfulfilled that he did do that yeah. Yeah. Right? Work, we all like some of us dislikes our bo- bosses and i was just like wait, i was like waiting for this and it never happened and i was disappointed yeah, yeah. that was his point too that needed to happen like he could it, it was a half hour episode though so you, they, they it just... was yeah i i i honestly thought this was gonna be like an hour-long show 
Oh, yeah, I think they were all half hour on uh, Amazing Stories. Yeah, right. I think yeah. I, I think I think this was an era before like hour long like tell yeah hour long yeah. television draw. I think even like the biggest shows were like still thirty minutes. Like even freaking MacGyver or something. MacGyver was an hour, I think. Um, I'm trying to think about back then, but there weren't too many. That is right. Most most TV was like these little half hour comedies or adventure stories that were usually on more on the comedic side, just because they didn't have much they could work with for dramatic effects. Right. Right, exactly. Um, so the real treat of the episode is when he gets this TV and he starts playing with the remote and he starts bringing characters out from the TV shows he's watching into his into his reality. Replacing the people in his life. Replacing the people in his life. Um, he, he eventually, he eventually, uh, ends up creating a family consisting of June Cleaver. Uh, from Leave It to Beaver, yeah. From Leave It to Beaver, Face from the A-Team, and like, and like Arnold Gary, from Different and Strokes. Arnold yeah. from Different Strokes, I say Gary Coleman. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually met him. Oh, you I did? Met, I met, I met Gary Coleman before he passed away. I, I went to one of the, um, E3s, one of the early ones, like, like, uh, 98, 99, one of those ones. And, uh, um, I met him, took a picture with him, oh, and the cool. whole time my friend was trying to take the picture and he couldn't figure out my camera, and so Gary Coleman was talking trash about my friend in my ear the whole time. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there kind of cracking up, trying to hold my face regular, you know, as Gary Coleman's talking trash about my friend as he's trying to take a picture. <laughs> that, that's awesome. <laughs> So it was, it was pretty cool to see Gary Coleman there. So, uh, that's what you, you got to see in this episode, you got to see Lou Ferrigno Hulk. That's right. That happened. <laughs> Lou Ferrigno Hulk. And, uh, we got to see Kit from the, um, Knight Rider. Yep. <laughs> Ed, Ed McMahon. Um, yeah. Who, lots who of, imparts the message. Who imparts the, yeah, the message at the end, you know, like, like, we're not real. This isn't real. Go back to your family. <laughs> Go back to what's real, uh, you know. So basically, it's like the, I guess the message was, you know, like like this guy was like too obsessed with his television. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's and at the end, after after he turns it off, he brings his family back and he gets rid of all these characters. Like the television disappears. Yeah, that was very significant for me as well. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, Lee, this is like before your time, I think, right? Cause you're, you're quite a bit younger than Will and I, I think. Uh, I'm 26. Yeah. So this is before you were born, this but show. Yeah, <laughs> about 10 years younger, no, well, nine years younger than where I am. Where I am. So, uh, um, for you, is this a series that you'd heard about before that you knew about? I didn't know anything about this. I thought it was like, um, I'd watch a show. I don't know if it was called Amazing Stories, but I, it was something similar in the title, but, and it was about like real people, people surviving like horror attacks or things like that. And I thought it was going to be something like that, like, like half hour, like. Oh. <laughs> oh, like a, a, um, yeah, like one of those like quasi yeah. reality shows that's like, like a yeah, I survived or something. Yeah. yeah I like survived. a reenactment show. So that's what I was expecting. And then, and then it was, it was not that. So that was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> it was before my time, but I, uh, I recognized, uh, Gary Coleman from different strokes and 80s vibe or whatever it was. Yeah. Like I got, got that it was a show probably that aired way before my time. <laughs> it's, it's weird. This, this series, it was actually, um, um, created by Steven Spielberg, and I believe George Lucas was involved as well, and a few other kind of real notable directors of that era. Oh, uh, yeah, there was... Uh, Steven Spielberg was, uh, like, the, the director? Not on this one, I don't think. He, I think he did direct an episode. I think he did the one... I vaguely remember the series, because this is, like, even for me, this was, like, I was probably, like, five when this aired. <laughs> so, like, I, I vaguely remember um, the rest of the series. I think he did an episode that was, like, about, like, World War II or something So, basically, like this is this is the, uh, yeah, that one actually won an Emmy. Um, this series was nominated for 12 Emmy Awards, and it won five of them. Um, the first episode earned writer Mick Garris an Edgar Award for Best Episode in a TV Series. Um, yeah, according to this, the, the talent 
on the show was unbelievable. Uh, guest star appearances included Kevin Costner, Harvey Keitel, Gregory Hines, Charlie Sheen, David Carradine, John Cryer, Mark Hamill, John Lithgow, Christopher Lloyd, Andrew McCarthy, Rhea Perman, Patrick Swayze, Sam Watterson, Danny DeVito, Seth Green. Uh, Seth Green, <laughs> way before he was a known entity. <laughs> yeah, that was way before he was a known entity, yeah. Here is Cedric, Kiefer Sutherland, Milton Berle, Tim Robbins, and then uh, then the directing talent was even just as impressive. Uh, the directors on the show included uh, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, Clint Eastwood, Danny DeVito, Timothy Hutton, Robert Zemeckis, Toby Hooper, and Brad Bird. Yeah, Robert Zemeckis, who directed Back to the Future. Yeah. Um, Of course, yeah, Steven Spielberg, you know, no need to explain. (laughs) explain. I was surprised Martin Scorsese uh, directed. Clint Eastwood directed an episode, too. Uh, Yeah, there was this brief period of time in that around that era in which TV was starting to kind of be known as like, hey, maybe this is like a medium that's like equivalent to film. And then quickly that went like, no, film's better. And yep, then we went away to that. And now we're like back. So it's kind of interesting as yeah, well. That... Now we're back in this era where like TV's like questionable or, or arguably better than film. I'd say it's better than film right now. I'd say, yeah, I, arguably. What's coming out on TV, I think, is better than what's coming out on yeah, film. It's, and film. it's interesting. Yeah, the show was in an era where you, the, the caliber of talent listed here, you couldn't normally get on, on a television program. And now, yeah. and now all of them do TV, I think. <laughs> now, yeah, now all of them do TV. Yeah, Martin uh, Scorsese's done a bunch of TV now with, on HBO with like Boardwalk Empire and, uh, Vinyl. Um, yeah, you, you get these kind of huge name talents that are like, that. Yeah, they're on TV now. <laughs> yeah. well, I, don't, I don't think Brad Bird's done any TV since then, but he's, he is too busy with, uh, Pixar and Disney. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Pixar ever sprung out to TV, it would probably be a Brad Bird. Yeah, it probably would be, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, it's an anthology show, so like, that is, if you're interested, that is just one example of what this show can offer. Uh, the show, uh, being an anthology show and having like all kinds of different talent behind each episode means that each episode is going to be wildly different from the next in terms of tone and story and care. So it's definitely worth checking out more episodes if this one made you interested. Uh, only. This episode well, was actually written by Steven Spielberg, so that's where... Okay, it was. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. So, uh, the one unifying thing about all these episodes uh, of this series, great theme song. <laughs> yes, great theme song. Great opening. Uh, it's kind of... The opening is kind of inspired where it shows, like, ancient times and just, like, people, like, telling stories, you know, through the spoken word like they did in the ancient times, and then it goes all the way up until the present day for, well, for the 1980s, all the way up to 1985 with people like the family crowded around the television, you know, and it's kind of... I th- I thought that's a kind of a cool opening too. Yeah, definitely. And uh, um I'm excited about the series coming back both <laughs> because I just I like the concept of these like anthology series like this, but also because Brian Fuller is the one that's doing the the new series. He's in charge of it. He's he's not going to be like writing every episode or something. Well, he's it's not. still going to be like the way it is now. Let's see let's see if Mr. Fuller can attract the same caliber of talent to his version that, that they got I doubt it. Yeah. but i yeah. bet you it'll be better I, yeah. <laughs> he's not gonna bring in this in the names but he'll bring in a talent he'll bring in the ta- yeah he, I bet he'll bring in david slade who works with him a lot he's really good um he'll probably bring in some really kind of interesting tv writers that you know we wouldn't normally think of as being really great talents but then like in the context of when we actually watch it we're gonna be like oh wow this is really really well directed and really well written so yeah uh that was amazing stories remote control man um so that's pretty much it for our advocates thing uh what did you guys think about the just the general selection of all of it lee 
Um, I thought it was pretty cool. It was nice to see a, a huge variety. There was a musical, there was like a witch's show, and an amazing anthology show. I really liked it. I it was a, it was enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked it. Uh, definitely not any. There is not one thing selected that I regret watching. I say, you know, that makes me say, fuck. <laughs> uh, you know, like like not not one thing. So it was it was, it was pretty enjoyable all around. I thought. That's that's the thing about when we do advocates is that you don't really know what you're going to get from each individual person, especially when we pick such a tight theme like we did this time. You just don't know, like, well, what what had an influence on somebody? And sometimes you might be like, eh, I don't know. I, that's a kind of a show I knew about but never really paid attention to. And then you get a chance to kind of talk about it and watch it and think about, you know, the perspective of the person that picked it. And it kind of broadens your horizons a little bit about what you just watched. Yeah, I felt like I learned a little bit about each of you, and I felt like you also learned something about me. That was kind of the like the person who picked it gave a lot of like like reference to like why like why they picked the show because like I could see why each person picked that show in that episode. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Um. And and you know what? That's that's cool. I I like learning about people like that. <laughs> and this is the sixth one we've done so i'm sure we're gonna do more uh we'd like to have you back lee if we do another one you would you be available yeah absolutely so awesome. uh we'll contact lee about doing advocate seven uh i think we're also gonna try to reach um ed on that ed actually wanted to do this one but wasn't able to that's a shame uh, for early morning it's like five <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah uh, we'll, we'll work it out with him for another time, maybe for Advocate 7, and uh, do another kind of interesting show. So until then, uh, I'm going to give off our plugs right here. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can reach Will on Twitter. He's at Voxel Hero. You can reach Lee on Twitter. She's at Lee Swiffa. Um, you can check out our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, um, our site, tventhusiast.com. If, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, you can subscribe through any of the major podcast clients like iTunes, Pocket Cast, whatever. Um, and our entire backlog of podcasts is available on our YouTube channel. If you're subscribed through the RSS feed, um, through like for Pocket Cast or iTunes or something like that, you're, you're only going to get the three most recent episodes. Uh, in addition, Lee Swiffa is actually producing a new web series. Uh, can you tell us a little bit? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, Lee? Uh, so I'm producing a show. I met this amazing writer named Hannah Fiddler, and we're producing her web series that she wrote. It's a really funny, witty kind of like show that makes fun of shows like Degrassi and The OC. And I read the first season. I love it. Um, and I was like, we have to produce this. So me and her are in the midst of like pre-production, pre-pre-production really, and financing it and getting sort of all the nitty gritty details out. But I'm excited for it to come out. Our timeline is sort of like six to eight months to get it all produced and edited. Um, we're just like planning things out right now. Um, I, I, I really thought the show was very funny because we see all these arcs and these stereotypes, um, in Degrassi and the OC and they're just so ridiculous. And the show yeah. kind of points out everything ridiculous with these teen shows. Um, it's funny. It's well written. It's, it's got a tight cast and each character plays like multiple, um, people. Like, like the principal is the teacher who's also the librarian, who's also the uh, guidance counselor, who's yeah. also the janitor. Like, it's just, <laughs> it just totally makes fun of that, that teacher arc. Um, I, I loved what she did with it, the episode. It would, it would be funny. I think a funny idea would be if, if they made that all like the same character. Like, like. <laughs> yeah, it's all the same character. He, he's playing all those characters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just excited to produce the show and it's called Important High School Problems. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which sums the, it all up right there. <laughs> it definitely sums it, sums it all up. up yep. The uh, school is called uh, Exhibition High. Yeah. <laughs> not, not exhi uh, yeah. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> it sounds it sounds funny. It sounds great. Um, definitely, definitely looking forward to checking that out when that becomes available. Um, do you do you have like a website or anything where that will be available at? 
it's no, that's all going to get planned and discussed. Okay. The show will probably <clears throat> have its own channel, but for now, you can follow me or Hannah on uh, Twitter or follow TV Enthusiast. I'll definitely plug it in maybe a month or two before the release date and just let everyone know more details and things like that. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll report it um, on the site. We'll uh, just send me uh, a link to it and any information you have when you get it, and I'll pop it up on the site, and we'll talk about it again on the podcast when it's coming up. That's awesome. Thanks. No problem. So, uh, thank you, Lee, for joining us this week. Uh, you're welcome. Thank, thank you, Will, for joining always, me as always. Yes, you're welcome, Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, everybody, for listening this week. Uh, as I said before, check us out, tventhusiast.com. Thank you. Night. Good night. Good night. If you would like to voice your opinion, send an email to theweeklyset at tventhusiast.com. TV Enthusiast is a part of the Enthusiast Media Network. Stay tuned to TV Enthusiast and the Weekly Set Podcast for more